So I've now showed you the basic process of saltwater electrolysis. If you haven't seen that video, it's the one I did just before this one. You should take a look. Now by the end of this video, you are going to be able to etch your own common metals, like copper, in just salt water with electricity, and a permanent marker. But I should point out that this is not a DIY crafting video. There's all kinds of better videos and websites that give you techniques like salinity, container size, voltage, duration, masking material and technique. So if you're looking for the best results on professional or hobby craft work using this technique, other people will give you better advice. I'm here to explain what's going on and how, but I'll still show you the method. So let's begin. It's exactly the same as regular electrolysis. The only difference is what the electrodes are made of. Two electrodes, a positive one and a negative one. The negative is the cathode, the positive is the anode. Same chemicals as before. We have H2O, which becomes hydrogen and hydroxide ions. A positive is an anion, a negative is a cation. We have NaCl, sodium chloride, salt, which becomes sodium plus and chlorine minus. Apply voltage. And in my testing, it seems like three volts is a nice gentle voltage, which you can achieve with two AA batteries or two 1.5 volt batteries, although I use my power supply. It goes very slowly at that speed, at that voltage, but it proceeds very cleanly, I say. So three volts seems to be nice and safe. More voltage means it goes faster. But anyway, the electrodes will be made out of copper. Copper. And so is this one, but I'm just going to put an asterisk because it doesn't actually matter. The chemical reaction is going to happen at the anode. It's because of the voltage. It's not just copper being in there. It's copper plus the voltage. So over here, this is going to be copper too, just because I have copper. But this one is not going to react. So over here, just like before, we have the hydrogen ions coming over, taking electrons, becoming hydrogen gas and bubbling out. That's the same as before. Hydrogen gas is only dangerous if you set fire to it or if you breathe nothing but hydrogen. You're producing such small quantities of it, you can ignore it. The sodium and the hydroxide are forming sodium hydroxide, also known as caustic soda. This is an alkaline, a chemical base, but it's soluble in water, so it forms and splits and forms and splits and doesn't really matter. It's dissolved in there. So that's inconsequential at the moment. The sodium and hydroxide ion are helping in terms of carrying electrons from one to the other, accepting electrons from the cathode and depositing them in the anode, but they're not really doing anything chemically interesting. Over here, the big thing is the chlorine. We have the chlorine minus, chlorine minus, which deposit their electrons, so that's how the current flows. So now our circuit is complete. They combine into chlorine gas, bubble up, and out. And that's bad. Chlorine gas is bad. But now, this is the this is the recap. So this is regular electrolysis with inert electrodes. But now we have a copper anode. The chlorine, the chlorine over here does not bubble out. It reacts with the copper to form something called copper chloride. So the chlorine, instead of bubbling out, grabs onto the copper. It reacts. And then it weakens the bonds, basically. It pulls it off. So you've got your crystalline metal structure in here. And with the chlorine grabbed on, it weakens that bond and the copper atom pops right off. And you've etched. That's it. You, that's the end. You, you etch. By removing the copper, you have etched. Very good. And so it, you know, eventually digs a hole, removes some copper. And if you're asking how do you control the etching, you use a permanent marker, make sure it says permanent, or duct tape, or anything. Basically, you just physically block where you don't want to etch with some sort of mask, and then the only exposed copper is the copper that reacts. Once again, go look at the craft videos if you want fancy masking and so forth. I'm just going to say you physically block the chlorine from getting to the copper, which, first of all, prevents the copper from being removed, but second of all, that acts as an insulator so it does not deposit the electrons through the mask. So you're not going to get chlorine gas because it can't grab the copper, it's not going to deposit there at all. It's only going to deposit the electrons where it can get at copper because it deposits them into the copper and then grabs on and leaves with the copper. So that's how etching goes. But anyway, you have copper chloride. So that's great, except the chlorine is incredibly important. It's the majority carrier of electrons into the anode. If we have all the chlorine bound up with copper, the reaction will slow and slow and slow and stop. And you could add more salt, but that would be annoying. So we don't like that. Good news. Copper chloride is soluble in water. So what you get is your copper anions 
and your chlorine cations reforming, and the cycle continues. So we get our chlorine back. Good news. However, the copper now is a problem because the copper is floating around all loose and it can grab on. It can go back to where you just took it from. It can go and grab on to the other one. It can bind up some of the chlorine and reduce the efficiency of the reaction. The, the, the copper is, is sitting around being a nuisance. But there's one more trick. The hydroxide. We have, because you remember your sodium hydroxide, copper hydroxide. And I forget if it's one or two hydroxides that bind, but it doesn't matter. It's copper hydroxide. The copper plus binds with hydroxide minus, and that's fine because we don't need the hydroxides. We want to keep the copper occupied, have it doing something, you know, in the corner away from us. And the hydroxide is not needed. The hydroxide is carrying electrons out the anode, but the chlorine is carrying much, much more of them because we have many more chlorine ions than hydroxide ions. So if we lose the hydroxide, no big shakes. We're losing the hydrogen anyway. There's always more water where that came from. There's much more water than copper we want to etch. So we can lose the hydroxide. We don't care. And it even helps the sodium because the sodium is going to be binding to fewer hydroxides. So the sodium is going to be doing its business carrying electrons out of the cation or the 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 cathode, not the cation. Doggone it. But anyway, copper hydroxide. And the best part, this is the one thing that's not soluble in water. The instant the copper and hydroxide join together, bam, it immediately precipitates out. The water is not going to redissolve it. And the copper and the hydroxide, neither of which we care about, are completely taken out of commission. Your solution will begin to get a little cloudy. And then it'll start turning colors. It might turn brown. It might turn blue-green based on what salt you're using, what other crap is in there, some impurities. I've actually had both results depending on what materials I used. But the point is, it's just going to be floating in there. It's not going to harm it in any way. The copper bound with the hydroxide is not reactive. It's not going to grab on anything. It's not going to react with anything. It's just going to float around and look really gross. It, it genuinely is it's awful. It's like, it's like chocolate milk, except the second time around. Anyway, so as you're still doing the electrolysis, this is going to float around and make your whole thing look gross. And you're going to have a foam on the top, which is just some, basically the hydrogen that's coming off the cathode is going to be passing through some of this copper hydroxide and it's going to, and it's kind of going to be sticky, but it's not binding or anything. It's just, you know, physically there and it'll make a little foam on the top. You can stir it in if you want, but it's not going to bother anything. And then when you turn the electricity off, everything is going to settle to the bottom. The foam may stay at the top, stir it in, just like when you turn it off, just, you know, take your stuff out, stir it up, and then you get this, this nice, quote unquote, nice, ugly, don't drink it, solution with a bunch of of suspended copper in it and then you just leave it and it'll go and settle to the bottom and you're just left with water at the top don't drink that as for safe disposal just i would if you don't have pets or kids i would just leave it in the windowsill and let it evaporate and then you can dump it in the solid waste otherwise you can probably google disposal but that's it the only difference between regular electrolysis with inert electrodes and metal etching is you choose a metal for the anode, the positive side. Remember, it's the positive side, which is usually a red wire. And if using batteries, there's usually a label, which one's positive. The chlorine binds with the copper instead of becoming chlorine gas. So you're not producing chlorine gas, which makes it safe. Well, safe to breathe anyway. You, you know, the liquid is bad, but as long as you don't spill it, you're fine. So you don't get chlorine gas, and it etches and takes it out of commission, and then you just get the solid you can dispose of. Perfect. That's really all there is to it. Now, different metals react in different ways. Uh, from what I've read, aluminum should be about the same, zinc should be about the same. The internet says do not use stainless steel, because stainless steel is very resistant to the chlorine pulling it off, and it forms a protective oxide layer and all this other stuff, so it really doesn't work that well. And some weird alloys make nasty chemicals. And I would look up the metal you want to use. Just Google the metal and make sure it's safe to use that metal. But copper is the common one, so there you go. One last point before I show you what I did. One last point is remember, when you are attaching the little alligator clips or whatever you're doing, you, you have your thing to etch, 
Over here, the anode is your thing to etch, and the cathode is just some metal. It doesn't matter, just, just throw some scrap metal in there, pieces you don't need anymore, or just some copper wire. Make sure anything you want to keep, like a nice alligator clip, is not in the liquid. So you could, you could solder on, or you could use a plastic clip or something, basically to, to keep the actual good clip out of the water, and whatever's in the water you don't need anymore, because kind of etched one of my alligator clips. Or maybe it was one of my mother's. Anyway, an alligator clip got etched because I didn't think of that. Because it's metal. The chlorine's getting to it. I know it seems obvious, but sometimes it's not obvious when you're learning. So keep anything you want to keep out of the liquid by some means. So just as a demonstration, I took some thick, solid core copper wire to etch. And this is probably going to show up terribly on the camera, but I'll do my best. I'm going to use the whiteboard as a background so it's easier to see. So all I did was I made two little spirals of copper wire. I just took a length of the copper wire, took all the insulation off, and spiraled it so that it's, you know, compact. And this is the cathode. This is the negative end that does not react. You notice it still looks pretty thick, if it don't focus here. Let me get it on the white background. It still looks reasonably thick. The black is just stuff deposited on there. It wipes right off. So this wire is unreacted. It's just in there. In fact, let me not use my shirt. But here's a piece of paper I just used to wipe it. Well, anyway, it may be, yeah, you can kind of see the black stuff's just coming off. So it's just a deposit. So the, your, your cathode, you just reuse it forever. You make one cathode. You never need another one. But this is the anode. This is the one that was etched. And on it is more deposits, kind of whitish, goofy looking. That's some of the foam is kind of form. You know, the foam on the top kind of forms inside too a little bit and deposits on there, but the electrolysis gets through it because you have voltage, so it's not going to be a problem. But that wipes off as well. The foam wipes off. And maybe you can see, yeah, see that white right there? Because it's hooked. It was hooked on the jar here, and then this was in the water. That white is just where some of the foam was, so that wipes off. And it's actually, oh, you can't see that. So hopefully you can see I got some off. It's probably not going to focus. You see some of the copper underneath. I just wiped it off. But that's the border of where it was in the water. And you should be able to tell that this is thinner. If I do them side by side, you can definitely see the one that's been etched is thinner. I left it on three volts overnight. So it is slow, but it's nice and clean. It's a nice tight spiral still. It's still firm based on the thickness. It's, it's less firm because it's thinner, but it's as firm as it should be. It's not pocked or anything. So that's my technique. But that's all there is to it. Go watch some craft videos to make it look all pretty. There's all kinds of techniques for how you mask it and how you get your pattern on there. And you can always turn the voltage up to make it go faster, but in my experience, it starts ripping things apart in a not clean way. It almost kind of burns in there a little bit just from all the heat being generated from, you know, just waste heat because higher voltage, power dissipation. So I recommend lower voltage and patience. And no matter how gross the solution looks, it's still working. Just make sure that you are seeing bubbles on your scrap metal and no bubbles on your etch metal. If you see no bubbles at all, it's not working. If you see two sets of bubbles, turn it off immediately, you're breathing chlorine. If you see one set of bubbles, it should be on your scrap. If you see bubbles on the piece you're etching, you've got it backwards. Make sure that your positive voltage is on the thing you're etching. Your negative voltage is on your scrap. That's it. I hope you have fun with it. I'm actually looking into possibly making PCBs, little boards, using this technique. According to the internet, it's not a great way to do it, but it does work. That's good enough for me. I'm not a company. I'm not trying to make a profit out of this. I'm just trying to have fun. So good enough is good enough. And while you ponder that deep bit of wisdom, I'll be seeing you.